Okay, everybody, here I am again, coming at you, obviously, still from a &P Nerd headquarters, in front of this blank piece of poster board. Why? Because they didn't give me a poster for the urinary system, even though I paid for a complete set of organ system posters. Why? Because everybody always forgets about the urinary system, but I want to emphasize once again, that it works hard for you. It works massively hard and it does exactly what it's supposed to do, exactly as it's supposed to do it. You have to love the urinary system. For us, let's get back to our nephrons, nephrons, nephrons. That functional unit of the human kidney. These are the things that carry out those three processes that we have taking place in the kidneys for the formation of urine that really help us with all sorts of fluid regulatory type activities. So remember, three processes that happen in these nephrons. So three processes or processes, if you prefer, we have first Filtration. Represented by capital F. Then we have reabsorption of course a capital R for that one and secretion. with an S. Filtration, reabsorption, and secretion. Those are the three processes that take place in each and every one of these nephrons. So here's what you and I are going to do. We're going to draw ourselves a nephron right here and then label the thing. Take a moment, get some colored pencils, some crayons, some markers, something like that. And let's go through the parts of this nephron. I strongly encourage you to draw your own. Make it as colorful as you can. Yes, your textbook has a bunch of dif different pictures of nephrons. None of them are great. All of them are okay for different things. So I encourage you to go with one of your own creation. That's probably the easiest thing for you as the student. So what we're going to draw right here is a nephron. Everybody should have their own nephron, and I am happy to make one with you. That's an N there. All right. I'm going to start out with orange and make a fairly thick line here. So first... I'm going to draw this thing that looks sort of like a snake. See his head. Here's his neck. Then we have this section that makes a very long U-turn. Look at that. A very long U-turn in my snake's body. So I'll go ahead and do that. Here we go down and then back up like this. Gets a little wider on the way up. Then we get over here to what I call the snake's tail. like this, and then this big long vertical line with a few little offshoots connecting to other nephrons. And then this goes down off screen. So this thing right here, this is what some people call the entire nephron. I say au contraire. 
this is only part of the nephron. What we see here in orange is the nephron tubule. This is the tubule of the nephron. Nephron tubule, tubule of nephron, but you always see tubule in there as a descriptor. That's this, the snake. This is the tubule of the nephron. So I'm going to label its parts in orange. Why not? So first, the head of the snake is called Bowman's possessive, Bowman's capsule. Bowman's capsule, sometimes called the nephron capsule or the tubular capsule, but it's still usually just called Bowman's capsule. Then the snake's neck, this curly part right here, that's called the proximal convoluted tubule. or PCT, proximal convoluted tubule. It's proximal, meaning it's close to the head. It's convoluted, which means it twists and turns. And it's part of the tubule, proximal convoluted tubule. And if I have a proximal convoluted tubule, I think logic would only dictate to you that we must also have a what? Distal convoluted tubule. Of course, that's the distal convoluted tubule. Over here, or DCT, distal convoluted tubule, right here. And what's this big U-turn between them? This thing is called the loop. This thing is called the loop. Nephron loop is fairly common nowadays, but still we got a person's name attached here. H-E-N-L-E, H-E-N-L-E, loop of Henley, that's this thing. The U-turn is the loop of Henley. Bowman's capsule, sometimes abbreviated BC, Bowman's capsule. Proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule. And then over here, this vertical section is called the collecting duct. This is the collecting duct of the nephron. So now we have named the parts of the nephron tubule. Bowman's capsule, proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule, and collecting duct. And you will notice that someone, namely me, made arrows in here that show you the way fluid moves through this tubule. So it worms its way through the tubule in this picture from left to right. So I'm going to put little directional arrows that show me that. Like so. Then it goes into the collecting duct, joining fluid from other nephrons. Like that. Nephron tubule, part of the nephron. The rest of the nephron is the blood vessels involved. The blood vessels that make up part of this nephron. You can't have a nephron that's just the tubule. It has to include the blood vessels as well, because remember, huge volumes of blood going through this thing all the time. So, Let's draw in some blood vessels, shall we? I'll use red, that's a good size there. 
So first, let's make a red blood vessel. So here comes a blood vessel that's going to go all the way across the bottom of my picture, like this. Hey, that's not too bad for me. Then it's going to have a branch that goes up toward Bowman's capsule. And then it's going to turn and go right into it, like this, and then come out. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Watch me. I'm going to narrow this up quite a bit as it comes out, and then stop right about there. So these are arteries. They're red, right? See that? So this one across the bottom right down here is the arcuate artery. Now you should be drawing this yourself. This one right here is the cortical radiate artery. The cortical radiate artery going into Bowman's capsule. I have the afferent arteriole going in. It's wider. Then inside, what we have right here, everybody, I'll try to draw it with a little mesh work here. This is a capillary bed. Say that again. This is a capillary bed, a capillary network. You'll see it in lab called the glomerulus. The glomerulus. This is a capillary bed. And then coming out of Bowman's capsule, I have not the afferent arterial, but the efferent, the efferent arteriole. The efferent arteriole. And these blood vessels, of course, have blood moving through them. So let's draw some directional arrows here so I can see where the bloods go. Now, the two labeled blood vessels that we have, the arcuate artery and cortical radiate that we talked about last time, blood going in, blood coming out, like this, they sort of give me an idea where I am. Remember that arcuate artery? It arcs across the bottom of a pyramid. So do not put this in your picture. I'm going to repeat that. Do not put this in your picture. But just to orient you, so the bottom of a renal pyramid would be right up here somewhere, and then it would go down like that. And renal pyramids, you'll see in lab, tend to look kind of stripy like this. Those are all collecting ducts coming from various nephrons, hundreds and thousands of nephrons. So again, I said, don't put that in your picture because I can just erase it quickly here. That tells me where I am. I'm mostly in the cortex here of the kidney. Now I need to change colors, not red, not blue. I tend to like purple for this because that's not red nor blue. Starting right here on the afferent arteriole, I've got a blood vessel that comes out and it goes wrapping around and around this nephron tubule. This is Duane's artistic attempt at showing you wrapping. 
coiled around, coiled around like this. See the sound effects help. All around the distal convoluted tubule and then down like this. This thing in purple that I've just drawn in is a capillary. This is a capillary. This is called, I'll just put it up here, the peritubular capillary. The peritubular capillary in purple. Peri goes around tubular, the tubule. So the peritubular capillary, right there. And to keep me honest, how does the blood move through this thing? Well, it keeps going this way. I'll just draw a few arrows in here so you can see, see how that blood's moving. Going around, around, I think you get the idea up over the top. Yeah, making a big mess out of this picture, but that's all right. This is probably a picture you'll make more than once, if you're smart. And now I'll go to traditional blue. Uh, let's make it a highlighter. Traditional blue starting right here, getting a little wider, a little wider, and then it joins up with an, a vein going the other direction. The corresponding vein to that artery. Going to put some arrows in here so we can see which way the blood's going. That away. That away. And it continues down here. And I guess I should make them meet up. Like this. Good. Let's label these. If this red one is the arcuate artery, well then this blue one would be the arcuate vein. And if this one shooting up is the cortical radiate artery, this one shooting down would be the cortical radiate vein. I don't have a lot of space there, but you can see it. The cortical radiate vein. This is a nephron. Not just the snaky looking body and the collecting duct. This is a nephron, including the tubule and all the associated blood vessels running around through it. This picture, in my opinion, is a little bit better than the disjointed ones in your textbook because this is one big nephron all in one place. You got a lot of these things these nephrons. You've got a lot of these things in your kidneys. Somewhere around two and a half million between the two kidneys. And remember, these kidneys are holding what? About 25% of your blood volume at any given moment. So lots of blood, huge volumes of liquid going in and out of these things all the time. That's very normal. Make sure that yours is labeled like this one. Make sure that you memorize the pathway of fluids here and we will talk about we will talk about how these three processes play in this particular structure. So these nephrons may be 2.5, 2.6 million between the two kidneys. So over a million in each kidney. 
these things are doing all the work. These things are doing the filtration, the reabsorption, and the secretion, which we'll be talking about each one in turn. 